Lines and Planes. We're going to talk about lines and planes and their equations in three-dimensional space, but before we do so, we're going to review the equation of a line in two-dimensional space, the equation of a line in a plane that goes through two points. Now typically, you'll see the equation of a line through two points written in the form y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. To calculate the slope, we need to determine the change in x and the change in y and take their quotient. The change in y will take the difference of the y-coordinates. The change in x will take the difference in the x-coordinates. For this particular example, the slope is 6 over 5. So we can plug that in, and then it remains to solve for b. And after some algebra, I think the equation for this line turns out to be y equals 6 fifths x plus 17 fifths. And you can read certain information off of that, the slope and where it crosses the y-axis. Now, there's an alternative way to write the equation of a line called parametric form, which generalizes more easily to three-dimensional space. Instead of y as a function of x, we'll think of y and x both as functions of t. And the equations are as follows. x is equal to the change in x times t plus x naught, the initial point on the line. And y is delta y times t plus y naught. So for this example above, we've already calculated the change in x as 5, and we'll take negative 2 as the first x-coordinate. And the change in y is 6, we'll take 1 as the first y-coordinate. So this pair of equations describes a line. For different values of t, you get different points on the line. For example, when t equals 0, x comma y equals negative 2 comma 1, our first point. And when t equals 1, x comma y equals... 3 comma 7. If you want to see a picture of the line, I'm going to draw an xy axis. When t equals 0, you have the point there. When t equals 1, you have a point here. And then for other values of t, you get different points on the line. Here's t equals 0. Here is t equals 1. So, for instance, t equals 1 half would give you a point midway between them. As t gets larger, say t equals 3 halves, you move further along in one direction. For negative values of t, say t equals negative 1 half, you'll get points on the opposite side of 0. Think of t as time. As you're traveling along the line at different points in time, you follow a path, you get different points on the line. So again, think of t as a parameter that tells you where you are along the curve or the line. Now, parametric form is just another way to write the equation of a line. There's other notations, other forms you could use, and one may be more convenient than the other, depending on the situation. For example, we've talked a lot about vectors. You could write the equation in vector form. Say the vector x comma y. Well, we could actually put the equations for x and y, which we've calculated, in the x and y positions. And using vector addition and scalar multiplication, we can break this apart. 5 comma 6 times t plus negative 2 comma 1. The advantage to this method is the two types of information we're used to seeing, the slope and the intercept, are easily read off of this equation. The slope is a vector, which gives you your change in x and your change in y. And the vector which we're adding to it, think of that as the intercept. But instead of the y-intercept, it's when t equals 0. And think of this as the initial point on your line. In addition to vector form, you could in fact eliminate the parameter t and write the equation in something called symmetric form. The idea behind symmetric form is once you have your equations for x and y in terms of t, solve those equations for t. So here t is x plus 2 over 5, and t is y minus 1 divided by 6. Since they're both equal to t, they are both equal to each other, and so we have x plus 2 over 5 equals y minus 1 over 6. 
Again, it represents the same line, it's just written in a different way, this way eliminating the parameter t altogether. Now the advantage to writing the equation of a line in this form, whether it be parametric or vector or symmetric, is all of those forms generalized to three-dimensional space in a straightforward way. The only difference is, in parametric form, you have a third equation. So, for the z-coordinate, think of z as a function of t, and similar to before, z is equal to the change in z times t plus z naught, the z-coordinate of your initial point. So let's do an example. It'll make the definition a little bit more clear. Let's say we want to determine the equation of a line through two points, the point 4, negative 3, 5, and the point 6, 2, 1. The first thing we need to do is calculate the change in x, which is 2, the change in y, which is 5, and the change in z, which is negative 4. Once you have these three values, you can write the parametric equations pretty quickly. Remember, in parametric form, x, y, and z are all functions of t. The change in x is 2 times t, plus we'll use 4, negative 3, 5 as our initial point. So x equals 2t plus 4, y equals 5t minus 3, and z equals negative 4t plus 5. So that set of equations is the parametric form of the line through those two points. Vector form, we collect together our three equations and put them into vectors. In this case, after you do vector addition and scalar multiplication to separate out the slope vector and the intercept vector, you get the vector x, y, z is equal to the vector 2, 5, negative 4, t plus the vector 4, negative 3, 5. And finally, their symmetric form, when you eliminate the parameter, solve each of those three equations in parametric form for t, and then set all the equations equal to each other. Since you could solve them all for t, you could set them equal. So you'd get that pair of three equations, that set of three equations. So there you have it, three different forms for the equation of a line. Now, in addition to lines in three-dimensional space, we'll have other things we want to talk about. But one final thing about the equation of lines, because we have them in vector form, we can use some of the ideas we've talked about previously to calculate a few more things about the lines. So, for example, let's say we're given the equation of two lines, the line L, is vector v times t plus vector p. The line m is vector w times t plus vector q. The two lines l and m are parallel when the slopes are multiples of each other. In other words, when the slope vector of l is a constant multiple of the slope vector w. Furthermore, two lines are perpendicular. l is perpendicular to m when well, when the slopes are at a right angle to each other. In other words, when vector v dot vector w is equal to zero, the dot product. All right, moving on. We would like to talk about not only the equations of lines, but the equation of planes. Now, a line is determined by two points. As soon as you have two different points, there's exactly one line which passes through them. If you want the equation of a plane, you need to be given three points. Also, those points cannot lie on a line. Let's say you're given three points, P, Q, and R. And three points that do not lie on a line, sometimes they're called non-collinear points, so they're arranged in a triangle. You can think there's really only one flat surface which goes through all three of these points. So, let's sketch out a blue pane plane passing through these three points. Now, in order to calculate the equation of a plane, there's a few steps. First, 
we're given three points, we want to change those points into a pair of vectors. Say the vector from P to Q and the vector from P to R. Now after you have those two vectors, what we'll do next is create a vector n by taking the cross product of those two vectors. Now you may recall when we talked about the cross product that if you have two vectors, the cross product is a vector which is orthogonal to both of them. So in other words, n forms a right angle with PQ, n also forms a right angle with PR. Now, the vector n it kind of gives us the slope of the plane. In other words, to determine whether or not a point is in the plane, I'll remember that n is perpendicular to any vector which lies in that plane. So, if you come up with another point, s, which is in the plane, then it must be true that the vector from p to s is perpendicular to the vector n. The point s we'll leave in general form. We'll call the point s x, y, z. So the vectors p, s, and n are perpendicular. Now we can calculate whether or not they're perpendicular by taking their dot product. The dot product is zero when they're perpendicular. So let's say we've calculated the vector n. Let's say we get the vector abc. And the point p, that point is actually given to us. We have numerical values. We'll call that x naught, y naught, and z naught. Now that's enough information to calculate the dot product right there. The vector from p to s do some subtraction, x minus x naught, y minus y naught, z minus z naught. Dot product with the normal vector, abc, that should give us zero, and that will be the equation for the plane. Now if we multiply it out, we'll get a times the quantity x minus x naught, plus b times the quantity y minus y naught, plus z times the quantity c, sorry, c times the quantity z minus z naught is equal to zero. Then we'll multiply through and collect the constant terms on the right-hand side. So ax plus by plus cz is equal to d. And d is what you get when you move the constant terms to the other side. That's the theory. Let's do a quick example. Equation of a plane is a lot of steps, but it's pretty straightforward. First, we want to come up with the equation of a plane through three points. We need three points. So say the points P, 1, 2, 3, the point Q is 4, 6, 5, and the point R is 7, 7, 8. Do some subtraction and we can determine the vectors P, Q. So vector 4 minus 1 is 3, 6 minus 2 is 4, 5 minus 3 is 2. The vector P, R, let's see, 7 minus 1 is 6, 7 minus 2 is 5, 8 minus 3 is 5, gives us two vectors. Now calculating the cross product of two vectors, remember we use a 3 by 3 determinant to calculate that. The first row is comprised of the unit vectors i, j, and k. Then we put the vector q, p, q in the second row, the vector p, r in the third row. We break that up into three 2 by 2 determinants. See, the coefficient of i is the determinant 4, 2, 5, 5. See, the coefficient of j, remember, we've got a negative sign in front of the second term. The coefficient of j is the determinant of 3, 2, 6, 5. The coefficient of k is the determinant 3, 4, 6, 5. Each of these we can calculate. 20 minus 10 is 10. 15 minus 12 is 3. 15 minus 24 is negative 9. So there you have your normal vector. The components of this vector, that's our a, b, and c. And we're going to dot product that with a vector from P to S. So we have X, Y, and Z in the coordinates of P. And because they're perpendicular, it's equal to zero. That's the equation of the plane through those three points.